Hello, in this release we're going to cover some of the key changes in release 2022R11. In this release the big change is the addition of a server, server feature for um, all survey agents that allows them to import statements directly from server instead of through a file it'll be through an open API web service and it'll reflect directly in Mover Suite application. In order to prepare for that we had to make changes that um, will affect other processes. Um, in particular it affects the item code mappings and so we'll discuss that here first. We'll go through all the administration changes and then we'll jump over to the Mover Suite application and discuss that as well and just highlight some of the changes not um, not specifically for Serva but the ones that affect everyone potentially. Um, so with the, with the change, uh, one of the first things I'd like to point out here under accounting and financial services is the addition of this van line group. As part of the upgrade process, we went we added um, all these for you, and what this does is allow uh, allow us or you to have multiple mappings for different van lines. So if you ha are a unit group agent, you can have um, whatever your downloads are for sta statement downloads or revenue imports you can have that set up to point to one group and instead of you know having multiple mappings or multiple item codes for each of your uh, supported codes for each of the fan lines what this does is uh, you'll see in a minute that on the item codes there are now mappings that you can tie this one um, van line group to and you can have multiple um, uh, codes associated. It could be for the same van line group. You can have you know five different codes associated to one item code if you like, and they'll all work. Um, you couldn't do that before, but in order to do that, we had to come up with this van line group. Um, this, um, if you don't like this, again, these are the defaults that we'll add on the system for you. Um, the one that's actually being used is called a generic service codes because we didn't know when we. Cr uh, you know at that point we don't know what systems you might have in place so we just created the all of these and assigned mappings um, for your service uh, service codes to this generic um, group here so if you wanted to you can leave uh, this generic one in place and never um, you have to do a thing you should be able to do statement imports through payment management and revenue imports with distribution codes from your agencies and uh, revenue so you, you could still do all that as is um, just letting you know that if you wanted to you could come in here and and start using this unigroup one um, some of the or you know or server or atlas um, if, if you if you so choose to and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later um, we advise you not to change this external code um, here um, if you can you, you will break things so please don't do that um, we have this XML system data map what that does is that's our um, our initial basically our initial um, stab at getting you the right payment codes and and the right van line so we actually pulled this data from down here in the XML system file and that gives us the van line codes as well as the XML interface and we'll use this to actually you'll see later a huge plus is that on any of your uh, the payment codes that come in through a, an import whether it's server or unigroup Atlas we will automatically default the payment code now for you so that's that's a big improvement this flag here um, you want to leave that um, inactive so what this tells me or us is that you this is no longer active at this point it's not in in use the only one that's in use initially will be the generic service code after you upgrade and again we'll talk about this in just a minute um, so that's that's um, that's all we have for on the van line um, the van line group setup we also changed the name of the service code here. This is going to be, uh, it was formerly just service code. 
and now it's service code accounting and what that does is it aligns it better with its actual use um, you'll see it on attached to the item codes as it was before with the same with a different label and what this does is it indicates that this is the code that you that is sent over to Dynamics GP that you'll reconcile with so we just kind of give it a little name change just so you're not to be con too confused with what you'll see in the mappings on the item code itself if we look up a uh, packing code for example here is that service code um, again no change there just the label change and now here is this new mapping section right here it's um, van line service code to item code mapping and again for all your codes that you had out there existing we will go ahead for all your item codes pretty much we will add this generic mapping um, for it and again, you can change it here. Um, I don't; it won't work, so you'll have an error because, uh, as if you remember back here in van line group setup, we have that inactive flag. So this van line group is inactive. So um, what you can do, and I'll show you this in just a minute, is you can set all the mappings up for that other group, and then you can switch it on, and then from that point forward, it always look at that new group. So this is only if you want to change. Um, again, we've assigned a van line service code here for this packing item. This is what we determined was val val what you had set up before, and along with the carton code for a unit group um, download for distribution code here. So that's all we did. We added that. Um, so if you wanted to, um, and you'll see how these work in a minute, if you, you, you can go here and add, you can start adding your own manually. Uh, let's use unit group as an example and do two, since we don't have that, and just do something crazy. So we can add new codes, and you can add as many as those wants, and that's the benefit of this change. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. You can du duplicate it here. Um, so this is the manual way of entering it. The other option is up here under your mass op edit options. You have the ability to do a mass copy from the van line service code group to item code mappings. That's a long way of saying you can co make some mapping copies. So in this example, we can copy all those that are called the generic, which are what you're going to have by default you can make copies of them for all unit group and what this will do is we'll create two records here and again all the unit group, group ones will not work until you go back into van line group and tick that flag to or uncheck the um the inactive flag um, so if you wanted to that's one way to copy another option that's coming to you in the next release is this import van line service code item code mapping yes another long title <laughs> And what it does is um, it allows you to build your own files through a spreadsheet and import that as your as your um, uh, as your uh, mappings. And in in that you can either skip any ones that are um, the found that are the same, or you can overwrite them. So this is a way for you if you didn't want the generic ones to be out there anymore, you want to give it you know the unigroup branding or the um, server just in case you know which will be potentially be important as you, if more codes come down from the van line um, you can override all the existing ones and so um, the first thing I would do if I came into this screen I would click on this generate existing item code worksheet and then you have two options one option is yes yes will bring in um, a copy of all the mappings that you have on your system including all the data that you want to import so let's look at that if i do yes you get a worksheet that you can search through here like we can search for our packing one here there's the packing line um here is the the van line uh group the, the service group here and again, this is using not the name, but it's using an external code that's associated to van line code. So you'll want to get familiar with that. 
Um, this has been copied to a template, so if I come in here and paste it, this would be all the data. Um, this would be all the data that you, you that is um, built around those mappings for each of the item codes. This is the item code column. You can expand this to see the actual names, but so this what you, what you could do is you can change all this, all these to you know Unigroup if you wanted to, um, assuming that's the correct external code, which I believe it is. And then um, you'd probably want to leave that alone. You can add items in here as well. If you don't see, like if you wanted to add the service code too, you could. Um, and then you can change um, all the stuff, the item code column. The only columns that are being read are the, these three and this one. So these are the only ones that will actually update data for just so you know. So the rest of this is for you know your reference only. So that's what one option looks like. And if we go back here, and if we do um, another one, this time we're going to do no. And it's the same file. But what we do, what happens when we copy it is all these are blank. So the the external code, the service code, um, and the carton code are all, and the description are all blank for you to fill in. So if, and where this comes into play is we'll save this file, we'll build it, save it, and then you could come in here and find it here. Use a browse, locate locate the file, open it, and then you can import it. When you do import it, you can specify whether it has a header or not. Um, in this case, it does. Um, this option is if you just want to skip all the existing ones, um, you can do it, or you can overwrite. Like for example, if you wanted to overwrite all the um, generic ones, here's that option. You can report um, any duplicate duplicates, um, and you can just have an option here just to check for errors. So if I press import at this point, oh, there we go. Validation is completed. There are no errors found. So if I wanted to um, untick that. I can try and import again. So that's how this item code mapping works. Um, you do have a little uh, tool tip here. You can open that up to see the format. Um, and we do, if you have your own files, they have to be a common delimited text file and Excel or one of these two types of Excel spreadsheets. And again, these are only the columns that we're updating from that file. And so that's that option. There are a couple of other niceties that are really specific to support personnel to, to support this. So um, our support team will be aware of that. So if you have any questions about what those might entail, you can ask them. Um, but they'll probably bring them up when they're um, helping you if you have any troubles. Um, one more thing here. I don't know if you notice this up here. It's a uh, pink box. Um, this is a warning to indicate that there are duplicates when we did the upgrade. It, there are chances are most likely there are some duplicates. Um, so we'll have a service code that is assigned more than once. What you what you probably had if this is the case and these are service codes that you're using, you actually probably received an error. For example, if you were doing a statement import and um, you, you, you imported for this service code 112, you would have an error in your code and you most likely just kind of did a workaround um, for it. This gives you an opportunity to cl clean that up and avoid any future errors um, down the road. Um, so if I expand one of these details, I can see that item code 112 and item code 371 are mapped to 112, um, that service code. So they have mappings on these that have this. If I look for um, Let's just search for 371. If I search for this one, I could see that mapping here. Uh, and sure enough, it is 112. Um, so one way to fix that is I can go 371, assuming that's the correct one. You want to make sure that the, they're correct and they're unique. You only want a service code used once for a particular um, van line or van line group. So for this, entity you want that to be unique. Um, we also look at this van line carton code too. So the combination of these three values, the group, 
the service code and the carbon code must be unique. So if I updated this record um, and do a refresh, it went away from this list. So that one's fixed. And now on here's an example of one with the carton code, and it has three different um, item codes attached to it for carton code nine 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 nine, and it, it looks like there's a couple more for zero i four. So it would be on you to identify which for your your van line that you're interfacing with or um, uh, which one's correct for you know container commissions or TV flat flat panel um, and then these types and then to make sure that f these item codes are updated to reflect the correct carton code and service code combination so I'll leave that for you to do um, a couple options here you can see that these are those um, external codes associated to the van line group um, once all these errors are cleaned up or warnings, um, these warnings that cause errors, once they're all cleaned up, this error, this will all go away and you won't see it again unless you do create duplicates. So, so under the item code generation tool, um, a big change here is that, shoot, um, it opens up directly right away so you don't have to wait for it to open. Um, you don't, and you don't have to go through another screen to get it to open. It'll pop right up. And what changed here is we removed the branch because it was no longer uh, or is not needed in the, um, the development of the mapping. So we removed it. Um, and we updated this van line service code setup section. Um, where this comes in handy is if you're going to add a new van line, uh, a new item code. Um, this will create that initial mapping that's tied to the item code. It won't create two or three or four mappings. It'll only allow you to create one. So if we were going to add a, um, if we're going to go here and do um, item code number two, I'm sorry, Cody number two, we can add that um, here. Let's say we want that for Unigroup. Um, we can add that initial mapping. So none indicates that it won't create a mapping. Same as item code indicates that it'll create a van line service code mapped that is matches this item code here. So it'll create a two. Um, also, if you do van line service code here, you can specifically enter two and two or whatever you want for the item code or carton code. So you can add that specific data to the carton um, f for the mapping. Um, also, you can go ahead and assign the service code to that item code as well. And again, this is that one-time mapping. Um, it can be anything you want. And the sync option here will allow, it will instruct the application to ignore this service code accounting setting and look to this item code to reference that matching service code. So in this case, it will find one that has two in it. So, and if we save this, um, we can go look at it over here. There's that, here's that mapping we just created. Now on the Mover Suite side, um, quite a few changes in payment management. The, the first one um, is uh, under the import menu. We have this service statement has been renamed with the legacy, indicating that it's the old style the um, previously that still will will work and this is for the file the physical file that you physically open and, and retrieve and then we also have a cloud statement screen um, this is a new new screen um, in this example what the screen is indicating is that it's not just tied to service so eventually if everyone is sending us JSON files and we can communicate with an API we can retrieve the statements automatically and so this screen will show you all of it pending statements that have yet to be imported um, and then you can break down the details there's this pending um, 
view selected statements and you can view the pending um, items as well and, and just run through all the details. So on this you can on the pending statement view or the you know the detail view of the, the report you have um, a service code which is the new service code that we're mapping to along with the description and a service code too which would be the existing service code in the case of Serva this would be this would be something different this is what they call the abstract codes or the old the legacy codes we still need those in order to process both systems at a time so that's why you'll see them there's some options here to expand all the detail and 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 view this and some totals at the bottom so get used to using this screen if, if you're a survey agent again all this stuff is this part is only a valid for um, survey some other da data in here um, um, you have this go column the go indicates that we think it's ready to import um, it has all the pieces because um, as Serva in particular sends their statements in multiple batches um, basically at least two a month they'll send to you uh, and then you can see that count here between the statement year and statement number so you know where you're at and if we think we've received all the pieces that are for a complete statement we'll flag this and then you can view the details the control amount to make sure that everything's correctly um, correct um, you can also notice when it was imported last um, and, and there you go and if everything looks good you can import it and then it goes through the normal processing that you would see um, for the statement import summary um, this screen if you're familiar with uh, um, the generic uh, uh, generics import the CSV import this is the screen that you would see no more of the old statement import summary screen in here you can see that all the payment codes were assigned to you um, some right clip op click options um, allow you to set multiple so you can highlight multiple records using a shift and click or control click you can select multiple records and change the payment code on the fly as you can see the the the, it's all set here for you the payment code um, so we that's one of the changes we made um, you can also change this grid around and resize the screen some other great features so get used to playing around with the screen as well um, um, one more change here in payment uh, management is on the statement import detail that you you, um, when you're actually doing the pay payment application you'll get a screen like this um, and notice there's a van line statement code that was the service code and then the accounting service code you'll see it here which is the service code 2 column again this maps matches up with what we saw in the item code so we had the, um, the van line statement codes would be the ones that are um, attached to the mappings and the accounting service code was the one that was attached right to the direct top level of the item code mapping so um, one thing in here that's different is um, on the accounting service code if there's question marks you'll see a uh, four question marks and it'll say no match in the description what that indicates is that the there is the file that came down or um, yeah, the, the import file itself or the, the record did not have a valid service code that's, um, that exists in your, in your system. So there was, it's actually most likely missing from that file. So just know to check the file, make sure the file is complete and accurate, and then um, check your mappings. You can cross-reference this with the item code setup and, and determine that. Um, and with that, that's about it. Uh, thank you um, again read through there's a lot of information in the release notes so please read through the entire online help again it pertains to not just survey agents but every every one of you um, and we'll talk more later